Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play Blackwell Unbound. When we left off last time, we learned some things. Uh, we know now that the guy that's playing the saxophone was part of a group called the C Sharps. It was managed by Jambalaya Records here, but Dwayne hasn't heard from a while and doesn't really know what's going on with them. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to do next, but I do want it. I figured out this dictation machine. I can right click it. I've been using it to record my dream. In the inventory, and now we have the option. So yeah, let's play that first recording. Testing, testing. Hello? Does my voice really sound like that? <laughs> Gotta cut back on the cigarettes. Anyway, I've been having some extreme dreams lately, but I don't remember any of them. I get the strangest feeling that they're important, but I can't put my finger on why. Hmm. I'm keeping this recorder next to my pillow so I can record what I remember as soon as I wake up. Alright, well what have you remembered? First entry, February 21st, is it? God, my head. I dreamed tonight. It's already fading away. I saw my mother. She was calling out to me and waving. She was smiling, and her face was bright. So bright. Hmm. I see a child, seven or eight years old. She's surrounded by other children, but she's all alone. I call out to her, but she doesn't hear. Something is wrong. With me? With her? It's fading. Hmm. Huh. I see a man in tattered clothes. He looks at me and screams. I look in a mirror and see a huge horned demon. For some reason, I'm not surprised. I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge staring at the seaport. I'm alone, strangely at peace. The water, it looks so cool and inviting. Suddenly I'm in the water, floating. Is that when Rosangela scatters her ashes at the beginning of the Blackwell Legacy? I dreamt I was in a strange room. The walls are a deep pink, and there are books and papers everywhere. Joey is behind me, trying to get my attention. I ignore him. I feel strangely good about it. Huh. I see Jack and Maria. They're far away, but I know it's them. I see his glasses and her bright red hair. I want to join them. I run to catch up. I almost get there, but I, I trip and fall. Maria turns to help me up, but it's not Maria. She's got red hair like Maria, but it's someone else. That's Rosangela. She says she's sorry. Then I wake up. Huh. I'm in a hospital room. There's a Chinese girl lying on the bed. I want to help her, but she doesn't want to be helped. Suddenly, I say a magic word, and her eyes widen with trust. I made a friend, and yet I don't want her friendship. I ran away. Now that's referring to when we talked to Allie's friend, isn't it? In the hospital. I'm on a fire escape. I'm talking with a man who wants to be my friend. Suddenly his face turns blue. He, he can't breathe. He dies. It's my fault. I could have stopped it. I'm in a huge house. I see gas lamps and electric lights. I look into a mirror and see an old woman. She reaches out of the mirror to grab me. I take her hand and hold it tight. Then I wake up. Some of these I've got no idea, but some sound an awful lot like Rosangela. I'm on a train, speeding away into the night. Next to me is a man. I know nothing about him, yet I trust him. I think I love him. Then he disappears. What did I do wrong? I'm trapped. Trapped somewhere bright. I see my mother and a woman I don't recognize. I see Joey far away, calling out for me. We're fighting for our lives, but it's too late. The world goes dark. Hmm. Oh, I hate that dream. Yeah, that sounds like maybe... Oh, and we're back to the first, okay. Maybe what's to come? All right, uh, let's see if we can get anything else out of Dwayne. Not from out here, I don't. We'll go in the door then. Come on now. Oh, because I still have the dictaphone. There we go. Hello again, Dwayne. Yeah, nothing else to click on, click on in here. Hi again. Hi yourself. Again. So, um, hmm. So you don't know what happened to the sea sharks? I don't know. They moved on or broke up. It happens. 
Mm. Okay, he doesn't know any of this stuff, so. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. What shall we try, Joey? I better wait till we're alone before talking to him. All right, fair enough. There's got to be something we can get from Harriet. She knows some kind of information. No good yet, though. Dr. Johnny Ivory's? Is there anything else we can get at 53rd and Lex? Now, Harriet used to live in the apartment building that's there. If we could ask her some more about that. All right. Joey, come here. I'm all ears, sweetheart. I guess we better get out there and finish this thing. After you. Mm. Hi, Jack? Nothing springs to mind. Well, that was weird. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack? Nothing springs to mind. Huh. Anyhow, okay. Any thoughts on our sax playing ghost? No more than you, darling. Mm. He likes his music, that's for sure. I doubt we'll get anything useful from him. And he Any doesn't have thoughts on, on her either. Like ghost? Her? No, she's not. Any thoughts on how to save her? Yeah, he, we heard this before. Okay. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. <sighs> do we have anything else to look up? I don't think we do yet. Hmm. All right. Let's Come head on, back let's out. get out of here. Right behind you. Let's look at Ivory's again. The Promenade Ghost once played in a band called the Sea Sharks. But that doesn't give me anything new. I don't see what one has to do with the other. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, um... I can't just take the sheet music. That would be rude. Alright, well let's... It's his sheet music. He's barely looking at it. He must know the song by heart. Can we get hold of it somehow? Hey, C. Hello there. Uh, I want to know about that sheet music. Maybe if I could take that to the ghost on the promenade. Are you sure you don't know anything about the C sharps? There's a picture of them right behind you. Lots of pictures appear on that wall. I just work here. I don't know its entire history. Now, you mind? I got a gig to finish. Mm. See you around. Anytime, sister. Alright, Joey. Go mess with this sheet music. What do we have here? He's written something at the top of the sheet. Ooh, what's it say? Property of Cecil Sharp. Cecil oh, Sharp? How oh, sweet. Maybe his mommy signed it for him. <laughs> No, the really important thing there, Joey, is Cecil, Cecil Sharp, C Sharp. Yeah, and he's going to try and say he doesn't know anything about the band. Not buying it, C. So, is it now? It sure is. Cecil Sharp, the C Sharps. Cute, real cute. Mm-hmm. Hey, C. Confrontation Hello, time. Man. Were you ever in a band called the C-Sharps? What makes you think that? Um, just the name. C-Sharp, Cecil Sharp. It's a pretty strong coincidence, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So what's your answer? No. Bull. He is so lying to me. We're gonna get to See the you. bottom of this C. Anytime, sister. Just you wait. Alright. Seeing as I missed the sheet music the first time, is there anything else in here that Joey can take a look at? Uh, the tables are empty. Okay, we're good. Um, nope, I can't leave. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. She's got to do it. Well, do we ask the ghost himself about Cecil Sharp? Maybe we do. He might have something to say. I almost want to go back to the phone book and look it up, but like, what's the point? I mean, he's right there. She's just going to yell at me. Like, If I want to talk to him, I can just go to Johnny Ivory's. 
All right. Joey, go grab that sax. Hello again. I said, I said let, let go, go of that. that. I don't suppose you know anything about the C sharps and Cecil sharp, do you? Get off the stage! What's wrong with you? Get out of here! Ugh. Ow! <laughs> All right, that amuses me a lot more than it probably should, and it doesn't help us. Um, well, she can't grab the sex. How am I supposed to do that? Yeah. He's a ghost. I'm not. Well, try talking to him. Forget it. Nope. <sighs> mm. And I don't think he's going to be able to just talk to No, it's small talk I'll or leave him be. Got to be something else I'm missing. Does Harriet perhaps know anything about Cecil Sharp? That seems like a bit of a stretch. We'll try it. It's open! Mrs. Sherman? Hello again. Hello. You got more questions for me? Yes. Always. Well, I ain't good. Do you know anything about Cecil Sharp playing in a band called the C Sharps? Who and the what now? <laughs> Never heard of either of them. All right. I really wish I could switch to Joey for this. We could take a gander around her apartment, but no, nope, it's a no go. Goodbye, Mrs. Sherman. Don't mention it. She's a tricky lady. Well. Oh. Cecil Sharp. Let's ask Dwayne about it. So, uh, Dwayne. Hi again. Hi yourself. Was Cecil Sharp in the band The C Sharps? Cecil Sharp. C sharps. Yes! I knew I heard the name from somewhere. So do you remember him now? Oh yeah, he was the band leader. Hmm. A genius on the piano. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Cecil Sharp was definitely the band leader of the C sharps. Alright, now I think we might be ready to go confront Cecil. I don't think there's anything else we're gonna well. In case, so here. Cecil Sharp was in the band the C Sharps. Yeah, that was definitely him. Okay, good. Thank you, Dwayne. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. All right, see, time for some answers. Hey, C. Hello there. You're not going to like what I got to say. What are you hiding? I want to talk to you about the C-Sharps. I said... I know what you said. And I know that you're lying. So shut the hell up and listen. I spoke to your old manager. He confirmed who you are. You spoke to Dwayne? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. You got me. Yeah. Yes. I used to run a band called the C-Sharps. It was a rotten time in my life, and I'd just as soon forget it. Why are you stirring up these old ashes, huh? I have my reasons. Yeah, sure you do. Why are you so upset about it? But that's all I got? About that sax player. Yeah? He's in that photo behind you. So I know he's with the C Sharps and that you know him. What is this? Just tell you from me. from that damn magazine? Magazine? What magazine? The New Yorker. You a reporter? No. So who is he? You just don't quit, do you? Nope. You want to know so badly? His name is Isaac Brown. Thank you. Isaac Brown? Yes. You happy now? Ecstatic. Great. She does not mess around. This is kind of nice. I, I thought it was endearing playing Rose Angela, and she doesn't really like being very direct with people and confrontational. Lauren does not care. Yeah, why did Cecil ask me if I was a New Yorker reporter? Who was the reporter? I don't know. Mitchell something? Slow talk. Drove me crazy. You think he killed Isaac? I just play the piano. I don't think anything. Especially not the past. Whoever did Isaac, the son of a bitch had it coming. What? So please, just get out of here. That was a whole lot of information we just got. So in the first place, now we know for sure that Cecil knows he's dead, and he had it coming. What do you mean? What can you tell me about Isaac Brown? Him? He's a bum. A drunk. A nobody. A lowlife. 
plays a nice sax. And how did he die? Someone strangled him to death with his bare hands. Isaac must have squealed like a pig. You don't seem very upset by this. No. No, but last time someone asked about Isaac, it was some reporter from The New Yorker. He came along, asked his questions, then bam, Isaac's dead. Oh, really? Yeah, so forgive me if I don't take kindly to pushy questions. Now that's interesting. All right, all right. Well, let's try calling the ghost by name and see what that gets us. Thanks, C. See you later. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't ever want to talk to us again now, but good information. Excited we have a name. I almost want to... We'll, we'll look up Isaac Brown in the phone book just because we can, but first, let's try talking to this fella. How am I supposed to do that? He's a ghost. No, talk oh, to him. Forget no? it. No? Okay, gotta be Joey. Is it... Do we have to grab the sex? We do indeed. I'll be back, pal. Don't you worry. Hello again. I see. You're Isaac Brown, aren't you? What's, What's it to you, you, man? So you are Isaac Brown? How do you know me? Get away! Get, away. Get, Get out of here! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. Hello, I see. What do you know about a reporter named Mitchell? Mitchell. Mitchell. Not sure. He's a nice man. He asked me about my life. He bought me a drink. Gave me ten dollars. Wow. He... Hey! What are you doing on stage, man? Oh, here we go again. Get out of here! Ow! <laughs> well, we got some information to start with, so that's something. Let's chat a second. Sure, what's up? Hmm. Our friend Isaac has certainly given us a run for our money. I don't know, Joey. I think we've nearly cracked this one. Yeah? You think? I hope so. Famous last words. <laughs> I guess we gotta try and find this reporter, huh? That's the way these things usually work. Alright, it's sounding like it's time to go home and take a gander at the phone book. So what do you think of our guy? Him? I don't think he wants to be saved. Really? Look at him. He seems peaceful enough. Yeah. I say we just leave him. You know we can't do that, sweetheart. Yeah, I know. He's <laughs> cranky and tired. Is that right? It's hard to tell with you. Be quiet. <laughs> he does seem kind of... Well, I'm sure he's not at peace, otherwise he wouldn't be here, but I do enjoy the music. All right, let's get on with it. Yeah. All right. It's got to be you, Lauren. Let's head home. So, first things first, just because we can, Isaac Brown. There isn't a listing. Dead people usually aren't listed in the phone book, dear. Yeah. Just the obituary. Alright, so we want a New Yorker. Yep, there's a listing for the New Yorker. Their main office is in Midtown. Well, call them up. Are they open this time of night? Thank you for calling the New Yorker. Ooh. How can I help you? Hello. Yes. I'm trying to reach a reporter named Mitchell. Well, let's see now. Mitchell. Mitchell. We have a Joseph Mitchell on staff. Is that him? I guess it's probably to try. Is he in? Yes, he is. Hold, please. Thank you. He's not answering. Maybe I should go up there in person. All right. You didn't wait very long, but... Let's do it. Okay. Also? Yes, there's a Cecil Sharp listed. Just a number. No address. And I don't think it's going to do any good to call him. Because this is the days before cell phones. And we know that he's at Johnny Ivory's. No answer. Alright. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. To the New Yorker. Yes? 
can I help you? Well, Are you Mr. Mitchell? I sure am. I'm Lauren Blackwell. Well, do come in, Miss Blackwell. Why, thank you. Ugh, oh, Joey, this would be a prime time to snoop. But no. Okay, um... I was hoping that you could help me. Well, I'll do what I can. What is this regarding? Are you a reporter, or...? Mm. We'll just say just research. No, I'm just doing some research. Uh, see. You're a student. Sure. You're a student of life. Uh, aren't we all? So what can I do for you, Miss Blackwell? Well... Let's, let's go roundabout. Because I have a suspicion he might have something to do with Isaac Brown's death. So, just to make sure we don't get him on edge. So how long have you been working here? Do you always ask such personal questions? I'm just curious about the sort of work you do. I write about people, Miss Blackwell. Okay. What sort of people? Not the famous sort. Just ordinary people, like you or me. Ordinary people, like me. You find that amusing? Oh, not at all. Alright. Let's get to it. I'd like to talk about Isaac Brown. Ah, uh, Isaac. Oh, he remembers him you right off. Isaac. Sort of, yes. I'm looking into his death. Really? That was almost five years ago. Why the sudden interest? Let's just say that I have a personal interest in clearing it up. Hmm. So tell me about yourself, Mr. Mitchell. I beg your pardon? Tell me about yourself. Yes, I heard you. I hope you didn't come here simply to interview me. I'm afraid I'd make a poor interview subject. Ugh. We got nothing to go on yet. Dang. Well, do you know anything about the construction site on 53rd Street? A construction site? I'm afraid not. Ugh, it there was a long so many shot, of them I was around. hoping. Always have been. Really? I hadn't noticed. I don't blame you. It happens so slowly. Buildings being torn down, new buildings going up. New York City is constantly evolving. An eternal state of rebirth. Quite unique in that respect, actually. Go back or forward 20 years and you won't recognize a thing. That's very... profound. Yes, I'm sorry. I tend to wax on a bit. Hmm. Well, he didn't actually help us with anything. Bummer. Um, I guess that's gotta be it. I think that's all for now. Alright. You have a good night now. Disappointing. Well, what do we want to do now, then? Do you know Isaac Brown, Harriet? Mrs. Sherman. Sorry, that's what she wanted to be called. I gotta remember that. Mrs. Sherman? Hello, you got- Yes, I- Well, I ain't good. Do you know anyone named Isaac Brown? Isaac Brown? Doesn't ring a bell. Alright. Do you know any reporters from the New Yorker magazine? Reporters? No. It is a bit of an odd question. Mm. Goodbye, Mrs. Sherman. Don't mention it. Alright, so there's clues we're missing somewhere. Where shall we go to look for more? We wanna go... Does Dwayne know anything about the New Yorker reporter? Let's try that. Hello again, Hi Dwayne. Again. Hi yourself. Again. Do you read The New Yorker? The New Yorker? No, not really my thing, you know. So you've never heard of a reporter named Mitchell, then? Nope. Mm. That sax player from the C-Sharps, his name was Isaac Brown. Does that mean anything to you? No, sorry. I remember the sax player, but I never spoke to him, you know? Mm. Quiet fella. Born to play the sax, that's all I know. All right. What about the woman? Couldn't we get... Maybe if we try showing Cecil the picture again and get him to identify the woman? Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. We'll give her a shot. I mean, we have two of the trio now, so how she fit into everything? He already knows about this photograph. It's right behind him. Mmm, then, then I can't get him to talk about the woman because it's not the regular conversation option, so it's not gonna work out. Darn. Um, hmm. Yeah, 
don't think we actually want to be here right now. Back to the construction site. I haven't really made any progress there. Let's try it. All right. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to see out here, right? So, Joey, head in there. I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Did we miss anything in the trailer? It says Seagram Realty. I guess they're the guys who own this construction outfit. Mm, nothing on the fan, nothing with the window. Nothing Cheap with the material. Uniform. I want nothing to do with it. He won't look in the drawers, because he can't see anything anyhow. That's the way out of here. Where's this door go? Come on, go in there. I can't make heads or tails out of this thing. Mm. Let's take a look-see. Ah, but we already figured this Harriet out. Harriet Sherman. I have no idea who she is, but any- No, none of this is gonna be... Hmm, the name under the picture is Farrah Fawcett. No, I wanna know I about this date that's all guys. circled. I can't touch it. Well, look at that date. Tell me what it says. Alright. Alright. We weren't really gaining anything by talking to her. Where else can I go? Well, we could- no, ah, uh, obviously. Harriet Sherman used to live there. We can ask her about Harriet. My home. We can say, oh, we're a friend of Harriet's. Hey, kid. Ma? Oh. So... I'd like to ask you- Look, I'm not- Who are- Ugh. I live next door. You do? Uh... No, you do not wanna- Who is- I told the old is mm. as a good bo- My home. Come on, come on. Hey. My- Uh. Ugh. You're not in a- What are you- We're on the gr- You, sir, look at the door. It says D. <sighs> I'd like to ask you- Look, I'm not- Who are- I would. Oh, yeah. That doesn't work. She doesn't have a landlord. I told you the only is as a good boss. She doesn't buy any of those. Okay, so that's not going to do it. Where else Looks can like I go? Looks like a foreman's trailer. The bulldozer didn't they do anything. They have no right. No right. Did I leave the gas on? All right, I'm missing something. What am I missing? That broad really hacks me off. <laughs> You should try flowers next time. It's a thought, I guess. Well, where are we gonna go? We have all these places we can go to, but... Hmm. I'm not ready for her now. Okay, I didn't really think so. Um... There are about a dozen oh, Joseph right. Mitchells. I'm not gonna... Um, mm, what are we gonna do here? You got any ideas, Joey? Joey? Come here. I'm all ear. Joseph Mitchell certainly is interesting. Yeah, interesting. Did you notice his typewriter? Uh-uh. No, what about it? There was dust on it, and the paper was blank. That thing hasn't seen much use in a long time. Now that's maybe interesting. Maybe he uses a pen and paper. Hmm, maybe. Hmm. All right, well, maybe that's worth going back for. Maybe we'll have something to see about it now. At least we've got his name now. Isaac Brown. Does that name mean anything to you? Afraid not, sweetheart. Still, a name is something to go on. That's a start. Anything?
thoughts on our construction site ghost? Her? Any thoughts? Eh. Nothing. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. Okay. Is there anyone I'm missing that I need to look up? I don't think so. Not at the moment. Is there anyone else I could show? I, well, I showed Dwayne the picture before. Come on, let's get out of here. I guess we right could behind. try and see if he'll identify the lady now. He might not even remember. What was the name of this band again? They were... Nope, oh, that's all he's got. Okay, nope, that's not doing it. Well, back to the New Yorker. We'll see if we can figure out anything about this typewriter. Yes. Me again. Twice in one evening? Well. Come on in, sit down. Okay, and I can't access that picture to show him that. Ugh, and these are all the same. Come on, Joey. No good. Yeah, there's nothing else to click on. Anything else you can tell me about Isaac? Why do you want to write about him? I don't want to go too in depth. Out of respect, you understand? What do you mean? Sure. I was drawn to him for the same reasons I'm drawn to anybody I write about. I felt he had a story that could reach people, enrich them, perhaps learn from. Really? Miss Blackwell, spend some time talking to the poor and the downtrodden. Walk down the Bowery and speak to the half-wits and the have-nots. In one hour, you'll learn more from them than you would from a lifetime of school. Hmm. So tell me about your- I beg your- Tell me about- Yes, I hope you didn't come, I'm afraid- And that's not gonna be anything new. So... I think that- Alright, you have a good night now. Yeah, thanks. You're not being useful, buddy. Cecil? What? <laughs> About Isaac Brown. Leave it, lady. The past is dead, gone, and buried. All right. About that reporter. I know nothing else about that man. Southern guy. Talked real slow. Asked a bunch of questions. Just leave it, okay? Mm. Joey, do you see anything else here? See you later. Yeah. Hmm, this one looks interesting. So, this woman, we gotta figure out who she is. Take a closer look. Take a closer look. Don't mind if I do. It's our sax playing spirit in the flesh. Whoever that is, I. especially with such a. Alright, that's all the same. new from you the only Lauren? thing holding up that pretty girl though the woman is black I can't see it's the jazz uh, okay we're not getting anything new from that so is he willing to say anything else about the reporter I wouldn't think so Go heckle him some more, Joey. Hello again. I what else do you know about Mitchell? Hey, what you wanna know about him? He's a nice guy. He don't bother nobody. He treat me nice, so I'll treat him nice. You stay away! Alright. Get out of here! Oh. <laughs> I'll be back. Alright, anything new about your own name again? I Probably not. You're Isaac Brown. What's it? So you are. How do you get away? Get it. Okay. Nope. Mm. Well. 
We'll just go home for a minute. I like the music here. It's a nice spot to sit and think. No. There's no connection between those two. Well, there is a connection, but nothing we can do with right here. No. There's no nope. reason to think... All right. But... What else can we look at at this point? There's no entry for that. Not really surprising. Uh, and we got nothing from... Right? Hmm. There's no listing. They must be based out of town. Yeah. Well... Have a look outside. I don't need to clean it. This won't get filled for a long, long time. Fair enough. What do we want to do here, Lauren? I feel like it's probably something with Joey that I'm missing. Not much I can do with that. Yeah. We've looked through this pa We got all the- I don't think he'd want them. Yeah. Who would, though? Is there anyone we could give this to? This one looks promising. Residents have- Nobody knows- Hmm. Okay. Let's visit everywhere again. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. All right, so it's got to be Lauren who picks where we go. If we go to Mrs. Sherman's or the New Yorker, Joey can't interact with anything. And we only have the options in our notebook, which aren't going to get us there. So I think those two are out for the moment. Uh, possibly something more at Jambalaya Records? Let's let Joey take a look. If it's all the same, I'll wait for the kid here to open it. I don't just float through things unless I have to. Oh, come on, is I it that keep bad? some shred of dignity. Fine, let's go inside. Well, now I want you in there, so get to it. I can't talk to the guy. Burning the midnight oil, eh? He's either really... No, oh, there's... Nothing to click on here. Two music joints in one evening? I'm liking this case more and more. <laughs> All right. We're not getting anything here. not anything further down the road here, right? Right. To the exit. Alright, so whatever I'm missing, I don't think it's there. I don't think it's here. Possibly at home, but I don't want to go there just yet. We could go back to Johnny Ivory's, back to 53rd and Lex. I don't want to go there. We were just there. But back on the promenade, it's just talking to the ghost again. Mmm. Been to Johnny Ivory's a couple times. Is there something I'm not asking about that I need to ask about? Do I not? Do I need to try showing the ghost the picture? Can I even do that? Hey, do you recognize this photograph? Hello. Nice try, sweetheart. Mm, nope. But I think a more direct approach is required. Yeah, I know, but it's gonna get you bonked with the saxophone. Record and playing. I don't think he'd want that. 
Mm. I ask about Johnny Ivory's. Just the same options we always have. I don't think there's anything. Can I? I'm assuming that the only thing we could get from his sheet music was his name. It's his sheet music. He's barely looking at it. But she won't I take it. Can't just it. take the sheet music. That would be rude. Well, you could ask him for it. He's not going to give it to us. Nothing's changed since the last time. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds a bit out of tune. How am I supposed to play it? I have to face facts. My piano playing days are long gone. Did you ever play piano? There's not really anything else for Joey to mess around with in here. Somebody is already playing it. Mm. I don't know much about pianos. All right. What am I missing? Joe, you had a thought about his typewriter, and it was a good point, but what do you want to do about that? Hey, Joey. Yes? At least we've got his... Does that name... Afraid not. Still at... Well, let's try it the opposite way. Yeah, we'll talk more later. Hey, I got something to say. What is it, Joey? Uh, let's look at the notes. Our friend Isaac has certainly given us... A I don't know, Joey. I th you think? I hope so. Famous le... Mm. I think our... Rep you think that... Have I ever... No, you haven't. There you go. Oh. I didn't mean to click through that. I thought he was going to say the same thing about the typewriter. So either way, there's definitely suspicion about... There's something more we can get this from this reporter, but what is it? I can't get a read on that lady ghost. She either wants to slap me or bake me... You could use a good slap. Yeah, I'd rather... Alright. I'm not having any luck talking to her. We can't show her the photo, because it's only Joey who can get in to talk to her. Hey, have you done something different with your hair? What do you mean? I don't know. Something's different. I washed it this morning. With shampoo? Yeah. That's what threw me. She doesn't usually use shampoo? Alright, let's get on with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm aware there are some people who are all about, Don't use shampoo, it's bad for your hair. The no-poo method. I, I know some people who tried that, but I just can't. Hair gets too greasy. Gotta use shampoo. All right. So there's got to be something we can get. Can we call anybody? Probably not. No. So Joe Mitchell, Joseph Mitchell, legitimately works for the New Yorker because he's there in their office. He's suspicious he's hiding something, but... None of our conversation options are bringing it up. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Mm. Yes? I'm becoming downright popular. Come in, have a seat. We'll try talking to him one more time. So what? I know he played in a band called the C Sharps. And then something obviously went wrong. What was it? Listen, have you tried asking Mr. Sharp? Yeah. Yes. He's not talking. I don't blame him. He's probably feeling guilty. For what? Guilty? Why? He has his reasons. Could you, uh, I don't know, tell me what those reasons <laughs> yeah. are? Yeah. I can't do that. Of course he can't. Why? Mr. Mitchell, I need to know what happened. 
I just Listen, need a depressant, I don't eh? like this. I don't feel comfortable talking about people without their consent. I won't say any more about Isaac or his sister. 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 Sister? Uh, please, I'm not gonna say anymore. The singer. It's his sister. Who was Isaac's sister? I told you. Not another word. Alright, so I just need to depress him some more. Okay. Who I think Isaac's he is done I with this, you. though. Okay. About Isaac. I told you. Alright. That's fine. You don't have to give us another word. We got what we wanted. I'd like to read your piece about Ooh, Isaac. Ooh, nice new uh, option. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you there. Uh, no? How? I never published it. You didn't? No, it seemed a bit in bad taste. How so? Since when do reporters care about bad taste? Yeah. Since when do reporters care about bad taste? Ah, you don't have a high opinion of journalists, do you? Well, you hear things. Oh, no. Don't worry about it. I'm well aware of the stereotype. I have written about deceased persons before when I felt it was in the public's interest. But Isaac, well, I felt the man deserved some peace. How do you mean? If you felt his story could reach people, enrich them, as you say, why didn't you publish the story? Listen, Miss Blackwell. Isaac didn't just die. He was murdered. Someone reached around his neck and strangled the life right out of him. That puts a bit of a damper on the story I wanted to tell. So nobody will hear the story? Yeah. All my notes on him have been destroyed. Isaac's story might not have reached the people, but it reached me. Maybe that's enough. Not really. No, if you had a story that was worth sharing with people, then even if he died, his story's worth sharing. I don't know. I guess I can kind of see. If it was supposed to be a story about... Isaac made it through such troubled times and he's playing the sax and he's in a band now and things are looking hopeful and then you have to end it with well never mind he was strangled to death then yeah I could see where that's a bit of a downer but all right mm, yeah I think we can be done for now thank you I think that's all for now all right you have a good night now you too you've inspired me to talk to Miss Sherman again and ask her the same conversation often a couple times and see if we can get anything out of her well, first, though, let's go heckle uh, Cecil some more. So, about Isaac's sister. Cecil? What? I need to speak to you about Isaac's sister. Oh. You? That's it! Uh-oh. You've crossed the line, sister. It was fun for a while, but now it's time for you to leave. Ooh, now you've done it. <laughs> He's so excited about it. He thinks that's hilarious. You know what? Okay, you want to be angry? We'll get angry back at you. Look, Buster, I've had it up to here with this. I need information, it's stuck in your head, and I plan on getting it out. Less talk and more get the hell out. Ooh. I'll leave, but I'll be back. You really have a way with the fellows, <laughs> kid. Ah, uh, don't sweat it. His bark is worse than his bite. Unless he's the one who killed Isaac. You just don't give up, do you? Nope. We need to talk. Um, look, I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Sorry and enough, sister. All right. Leave. You want me to leave? I'll leave. But then I will come right back. Well, that certainly worked wonders. We'll have to change our tactics if we want to get him to talk. All right, all right. We're going to state the obvious. Oh, look, it's Miss Wonderful. No more smooth to talking talk. to us now. He's done. Um, you could show sympathy, but let's... You're upset. I didn't want to upset you. I'm upset. Yeah, great observation. If you're so concerned, why don't you just leave? That would make me feel much better. Okay, this is me leaving you alone. No. Ever think of moonlighting in PR? <laughs> you're so good at talking to people. Thanks for being Seriously, helpful, Jelly. Whatever you're doing, you can't handle it this way. By talking to him at all, up, or you? you mean just try being sympathetic? Yeah, for talking like a civilized human being. I just... Shut it! Just leave, why don't you? Fine, I'm going. Okay. Stop and think, sweetheart. It's not working. As soon as Piano Boy sees you, he gets all bent out of shape. You won't get anywhere this way. Fine. I know that expression. Only time a man gets a look like that is when he's hung up over a woman. Go easy on him, huh? I think he cares more about that gal than he lets on. Hmm. I know that nope. only go I think he cares. 
well. But that doesn't give us anything necessarily to do right here. Well, let's try talking to Isaac. Now that we know he has a sister. Joey, you're up. Hello again. I said. Tell me about your sister. Huh? huh? What you what want you with, my with my sis? sis? Nothing. I just want. You stay, stay away, away from, from my sister, sister here. Okay. All right, Mac. Relax. Get, Get out of here. Yeah. Bonk. Ow. All right, let's try her or Mrs. Sherman again. It's all Mrs. Sherman. Hello, you got me. Yes, I do. Well, I ain't good. Alrighty. So, do you know Isaac Brown's sister? <laughs> Never heard of Isaac Brown, let alone his sister. Okay, fair enough. They kicked you out of your own home. No big loss. The place was a dump. Plus, they wanted it so badly that they paid most of us a monthly stipend just to leave. Pretty generous, actually. I can almost forgive them for nearly robbing me. Okay. So they paid you money to leave? Yup. Like I said, it was a pretty generous deal. Building was about to be condemned anyway, mm. so everyone was grateful for the offer. Well, everyone except for Mavis Wilcox. Mavis Wilcox, you say? Who is Mavis Wilcox? A lunatic is what she was. She lived down the hall from me, so I know how crazy she was. Why was she crazy? She refused to leave is why. Hmm. Seagram was offering her a fortune, but still she refused. Why didn't she want to go? Why did Mavis refuse to leave? She was a lunatic. I believe I already established well, I'm sure there was probably a reason. A total shut-in. The prospect of leaving her little apartment terrified her. Huh. I'm old and feeble. If I could manage the move, she could have. Of course, it doesn't matter now. If she had, like, agoraphobia or something, then, you know, there could have been a psychological reason she had trouble leaving. Did they ever get Mavis to leave? Oh, you could say that. Yes, you could definitely say that. She left all right. Left the entire world, in fact. You mean she died? Yes. Someone broke in and choked oh. her to death. Right in the apartment she loved so much. I'd call it ironic if it weren't so tragic. No, it sounds like you want to call it ironic anyhow. But they're both strangled. That's kind of a connection. Did they ever find out who killed Mavis? No. Some street kid, most likely. You don't know that. Thought the building was empty and went in to steal whatever was left over. Didn't count on anyone being there. Bumped into Mavis, then had to kill her. Happens all the time. It, no, it doesn't. And Mavis said that she kept her door, like, locked and barred or something, so how would someone just happen how to get in there? How did you know Mavis? Like I said, I lived just down the hall from her, on the third floor. I didn't know her well, but she did get some mail just before they smashed the place up. I took it, just in case a relative or something came looking. But it's been six months, and nothing- Oh, it's only been six months. Can I have that mail? Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? Just that she lives. There's nothing else. Alright. Anything else about- Can you tell me anything else about your old building? Good riddance is what I say. I lived on the third floor. Everyone on the street could see me. I like my new place much better. Alright. I think we're done for now, but... Oh! Do you still have Mavis's things? Yes, I do. Such as they are. There wasn't much, just that envelope on the counter. Can I have Can I look it? at it? You knew Mavis? Yes. Sort of. Yes. Well, you might as well take a look at them. Nobody else has come looking. Excellent. Did we just throw our ash on her ground? The whole cigarette butt? I think we did. Thanks. And we just took the envelope. Well, thank you, Mrs. Goodbye, Sherman. Goodbye, Mrs. Sherman. Don't mention it. That was actually quite helpful. Alright, back to our home base.
and oh, I want to look at that. I'm actually going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back the next time and we will look into that envelope. We know her name, so we can try talking to her by name. We've got her address, so maybe we can fake being a neighbor better. Or I'm, I'm excited. We're finally making some progress. Hooray!